All right, Vaughn, thank you so much. Well, after a contentious debate, Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Trump both claiming victory today. The candidates sparred over the economy, immigration, and reproductive rights during the 90-minute debate riddled with personal attacks. Joining us this evening, political analyst Joel Sawyer and Antoine Seawright. Great to have you both with us. Um, and let's start with this. Best moment for each of you. Joel, we start with you. Best moment for Harris, best moment for Trump. I thought the best moment for Harris was when she uh, was when she challenged people to go to one of Trump's rallies. Um, I thought that that was that that was very interesting uh, for her to do. And look, and the reality is, is that is that some of what she said about his rallies were true. Uh, and the Democratic, you know, calculation is to is the more you let Trump talk, the more you watch him, the less likely you are to, to vote for him. Um, you know, look, I thought that Trump did a good job of digging into some of uh, Kamala Harris's past positions and, and painting her as having flip flopped on a number of things. Um, but you know, all in all, uh, and we'll talk about this more, but I'm, I think it's fair to say that Kamala Harris had more good moments than Trump did. Antoine, best moment for each candidate. Well, I think I uh, echo Joe's uh, sentiment uh, about the crowd size moment and that uh, to his rambling uh, about people eating dogs. I think that was just a great moment for Kamala Harris. But I also think for Trump, his best moment was the beginning of the debate when he tried to make an attempt to differentiate himself uh, from her from an economic standpoint. The first five to seven minutes of the game was great for him. But after that, uh, I don't know what, what in the world happened. All I know is, is in the end, it was a shellacking. Yeah, Joel and Antoine, uh, give us your thoughts on the moderators last night in the debate. Um, two analysts and two anchors from ABC News moderating that debate as opposed to CNN anchors the last time. What were your thoughts on how this debate was handled? Uh, did you feel that the moderators did a good job? We'll start with you, Joel. I think overall they did. Look, it's it's very, very difficult anytime you're moderating a political debate because, you know, the, the, there's a couple of different things. All politicians are going to exaggerate some. They're going to spend some. But what you have to do is, is be judicious in what you call out. For example, um, you know, other countries don't pay tariffs. American consumers do. Donald Trump did not win the 2020 election. He lost. Um, you know, the thing about eating cats and dogs is, is not credibly sourced at all. So when, when a candidate says something that is demonstrably false, um, I think you have to jump in on that as a moderator. Now, one of the things that I think that they did a poor job of was, was balancing time. Um, there were a number of times where, uh, you know, Trump got an extra 30, uh, 30 seconds, 60 seconds to respond to things. Um, and, you know, Kamala Harris didn't try to jump in and do the same thing until towards the end of the debate. But I, I think that, you know, if you're going to have a, a function of being able to mute a microphone, you need to use it. Uh, look, I think the moderators did a good job. No reasonable person would be able to say they favored one side or another. Uh, the thing I appreciate most about them is their ability for to allow each candidate to provide feedback to the other candidates in response to a question. And so it gave Kamala the it gave the vice president the opportunity to respond to the lies that came from former President Trump. And quite frankly, it gave former President Trump a chance to push back or disagree on his narrative, whatever question that was given to Vice President Harris. So I thought it was balanced. I certainly think the mic the muted microphone helped Kamala Harris in a big way last night because if you go back and run the tape. Look at the receipts, as we say in my neighborhood. Trump kept on rambling, if you will, and she did not have to say anything. So she did not need to respond in real time to fact check him because he fact checked himself in real time with his rambling that most people already knew was lies before it even came out of his mouth. Let's take a quick break. When, we'll talk, when we come back, we'll talk about uh, how consequential endorsements may or may not be, especially um, when they come from Taylor Swift. So much more with our political analysts right after this.